Welcome to EO Talks, Eastern Oregon's very own talk show, only here on EO Alive. Uh, welcome, uh, Bobby. Can you tell us uh, who you are and a little bit more about what you do? Um, good morning, Alex. Thanks for having me. I'm Bobby Levy, a state representative for District 58, Union, Umatilla, and Wallow counties. And I'm excited to be here and visit with you about what's going on in the legislature recently. Awesome. Um, so redistricting is uh, something that's going on right now. Can you talk to us a little bit more about what that is and why it's important for the public to participate in that process? Well, redistricting is essentially redrawing our congressional and legislative lines, and they directly impact who represents you for the next 10 years. So we have a system where the lines are redrawn by political parties, which guarantees that there is always an ulterior motive for how the lines are drawn. The problem we have with that is that the committee that is part of the redistricting process, both Democratic and um, Republican legislators that were chosen by their respective uh, teams, is going around all over and um, wanting to get public input. So if we leave it up to the committee, they're gonna be forced to make different choices if, Oregon, if Oregonians don't show up to the hearings and say that they've had enough. So we will <clears throat> give Alex, give you the uh, information for the meeting that is this Saturday and how you can sign up and how you can talk on the phone to them, or you can send in written testimony. Uh, can you tell us more about how legislators draw the lines and what the criteria is currently? Legislators use a couple of different processes to redraw lines. In Oregon, as everywhere else, your district has to be continuous, meaning you have to be able to go from one end to the other without leaving the district. Normally, districts should be contained together and represent similar values. However, we have some incredibly gerrymandered districts in the I-5 corridor where fingers, literally, they look like a finger, has stretched into metropolitan or university locations, and they turn a district that would normally be conservative into a democratic district. These instance, instances directly impact whether or not Oregonians have trust in the system and they can trust their politicians. It's a, it's a pretty... Um, upsetting thing when you have people that live across the street from you and they're in somebody else's district and you're in another person's district. And um, that happened to me a couple of years ago and I live out in the country. I was in one representative's district and across the street was my neighbor was in the other person's district. He was the only person out of our whole neighborhood that was in that district. Hmm. So <clears throat> it didn't make any sense to us. Yeah, that is a little weird. Um, when is the next opportunity to participate in a conversation with the legislature about uh, redistricting? Well, for our district, we're Congressional District 2. That is essentially Cliff Bence's federal district. And, but <clears throat> that encompasses uh, all of the counties that are in Cliff Bence's district. It's tomorrow the 20th from 1 to 3 p.m. It's really important that if you have not already uh, commented by letter or by phone call or by email that we have a strong show of uh, people from our district so that the Committee on Redistricting understands that we want honest, fair, and transparent commissions that guarantee that politicians are not choosing their voters before those voters could choose them. Um, it, and so, Alex, we'll give you the link, the actual link that you can post on your website. They're posted on my Facebook page for you to just go and click, and we'll bring those up to the front of the Facebook page today, and they'll be there tomorrow as well, so it'll be much easier for everybody to just click on that link that we have, and you can go and testify verbally and um, have your voice be heard. What are some of the bills uh, you're studying right now that may impact our area the most? Well, there's a lot of bad agricultural bills um, coming through this session. Bills that change how the industry pays employees like House Bill 2350 
8 and Senate Bill 616 um, that has to do with overtime wages. And um, there's a bill that limits the amount of water we're allowed to use for livestock. That's Senate Bill 387. And there's a bill prohibiting the sale of diesel after 2028. That's bill um, House Bill 3305. So I do have some updates on those um, because some of them have not moved out of um, House Bill 2358 had a public hearing on March 8th, um, but right now it's still sitting in that committee. Today's the drop dead bill date. Because it's had a public hearing, I don't think that affects that bill. Um, House Bill, let me see, uh, 387, it is sitting in committee. That's the de that's the 5,000 gallon uh, livestock bill. It hasn't had a work session. Um, it, it's still sitting in the committee. So hopefully that bill dies today. Today's the drop dead time. And we have, those are the two bills that are the most contentious right now. Um, Senate Bill 616 hasn't went anywhere because it's the same bill as House Bill 2358, just a little bit different verbiage. So I think we're waiting to see what 2358 actually really does and whether they move it out of committee. So what are you doing uh, to try and help get our economy back on track uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic ends? Well, my number one priority is to do what I can to keep businesses open and get employers back to work and make sure this type of economic disaster can never happen again. As a member of the House Revenue Committee, I'm doing my best to convince colleagues that now is not the time to tax businesses. House Bill 2457 um, would allow the state to tax federal monies that were given to keep businesses alive. Uh, during COVID-19. We have a lot of pushback for that. Um, a lot of people have already uh, submitted public testimony. And so that can, that bill has been rescheduled, I believe, for clear into uh, April to be, to be for a work session. And hopefully we'll get a lot more people sending in testimony against that, that will keep it from moving forward. Um, my colleague, Representative David Brock Smith, has worked to keep his House Bill 3177 alive. Just about every single Republican has signed on to that bill. It limits the governor's ability to shut down businesses during a state of emergency. And so I would urge you to go, um, you, I'll provide a link on my Facebook page for that bill specifically. I would urge everybody to go write a letter and submit it in favor of this bill, asking them to pass it and move it forward onto the floor for a vote. I've talked about some bills that you don't like. Which bills are you really excited about right now? Well, I have a, I have a bill that I testify on this week in, in the House asking them to pass it unanimously and push it into the Senate in its House Bill 2160. Um, it's the urban growth boundary for Pendleton. And the reason it's so important is, and you'll remember, in February of 2020, Umatilla County was hit really hard by a uh, flood. And it was a catastrophic flood event, once in a million years, they said. And at 2 a.m. in the morning, they were knocking on doors of Riverside Mobile Home Park area. And those people were leaving their homes in waist-high water. When I went to view it, probably three or four days after it happened and the water had receded, the water line on all of those mobile mobile homes was I'm five foot and I like to say five foot one, but the water line was over my head. And what made this even worse is that in April, the same flood event happened. Oh. And this time the April event changed the trajectory of the Umatilla River so that should we have another flood event, at any time in the future, it, this time it will flood the city of Echo. Echo has 635 people in it. And so um, <clears throat> we're working, uh, there's a work group with that that's trying to make sure that that doesn't happen again by trying to fix what's going on in the river direction. 
Um, I'm not really excited about very many bills. Um, I've signed on to quite a few of them. Um, Senator Hansel has an elk depredation bill that will allow hunters to hunt with permission uh, if they if they see elk and it's a it's a damage permit. And if they see elk on the neighbor's property with permission from the neighbor, they can hunt elk there as well. Um, and then uh, David Brock Smith's 3177, that's a really good bill. And I hope everybody will testify on that in, by submitting written testimony. Um, we're trying to push that one to get out of the out of committee and get on the floor for a vote. Um, we have some Democrats that are really excited about that bill as well. So it's bipartisan. Oh, that's good. Yeah. My 2160 is also a bipartisan bill. We had people from both sides testify in um, in uh, favor of that bill. And so that's it passed unanimously out of the housing group to go to the floor. So I'm really excited about that one. So are you working on any additional projects while you're in the legislature? Yeah. Uh, so Tim Wallander and uh, Umatilla County Commissioner Donna Beveridge sent me an email and said to me, you know, Tim sent me pictures that he's getting up three or four times in the middle of the night chasing elk off of his uh, winter wheat. And so since 2004, there has been a group of farmers and ranchers working on elk depredation issues throughout the state. And it hasn't went any further than them working on the issues and not getting it done. And um, it's funny what happens when you get the word representative in front of your name. People are more willing to have a conversation with you. <clears throat> so we have a work group started. And right now what we're doing is that we have people, uh, landowners, we have Rocky Mountain Elk, Oregon Hunters Association, Oregon Farm Bureau, Oregon Wheat Growers League, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, um, uh, Nature Conservancy, and, and quite a few other organizations, as well as uh, individual farmers and ranchers that are going to be on this work group. And so we have sent out an email to all these people that have said they're willing to be on this work group. They need to send me a letter. So those of you who are listening and you haven't sent your letter, please send your letter in support of this work group and the, and saying that you will continue to work on this work group until we get a positive um, memorandum of agreement that will work for all members of the work group. And, um, and then we're going to, we have asked Oregon Solutions to be our facilitator. And that's part of the facilitation process is to find who's going to be on your work group and how they're going to take and participate and whether they're willing to. And that letter says that. Um, so the problem with the elk depredation is that most everybody who, who has been affected by it, they're the ones paying for all the damage. So we have to fix that and we're hoping that this work group will do that. I'm also looking for people or businesses that are willing to donate money to help pay for that work group. Oregon Solutions is not free. And um, so it's it, we have to look for donations now from area businesses or counties uh, to see if they will put money in. And so we'll be sending out letters asking for donations to help us pay for this work group so that the, the producers and the ranchers and the farmers do not have to pay for all the damage. And so that Oregon Solutions can help us get a solution to this. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say to the viewers before uh, next week? Well, thank you. And I next week I'm going to bring uh, to the table and let you know about all the bad bills what, oh, great. what is moving forward what has stopped as of yes as of the end of today um and how you can participate in uh, having a conversation against all the bad bills so i look forward to seeing you again next week alex wonderful i look forward to seeing you too bobby thank you very much mm -hmm.